I'm Dan Radigan from Monotype, and instead of just me rattling on about drawings yet again, I thought uh, it'd be nice to see what someone else thought of all the drawings. So we have Rob with us today. Hello, I'm uh, Rob Lowe, and uh, more so known under the artist name of Super Mundane, and I've always been into typography from the very early days of me loving the album covers of uh, heavy metal bands in the 80s, so that's where it all comes from. And I'm an art director and uh, graphic artist and illustrator. One of the things I lined up today is some, uh, some material from the other part of the company. Monotype today is many companies that have come together over the years, and Linotype's library is a huge part of Monotype. So I put out some material that we got from our German office, which is where the Linotype library is managed from of some of the original films of Neue Helvetica. Um, so before digital type, all the type drawings had to be kept as some kind of a physical master. In the era of phototype, the masters were kept on these pieces of film that were used to make all the negatives from. So the idea was they would go away when these films were reproduced to get as sharp an edge as you possibly could when the things were finally typeset. Um, but I think what's actually great about just the production process these sort of modular accents that they could swap out in the letters. So, oh, yeah. so all the lowercase o accents would be cut like this and they could be placed on, on top, any of the, like uh, so. the letters. Yeah. So. yeah. And I was using yeah, you know, typesetting to begin with when I, even on my first job. And I remember the, there was the very complicated uh, maths you had to go through to set type. I have nightmare memories of yeah. copy fitting charts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As hard as, as photo typesetting was when people looked back and did it, it actually was so much faster and cheaper than hot metal setting. Right, yeah. And it was the intermediate step before getting to digital type. But you say you use a lot of uh, Neue Helvetica in your work. I, I use a small range of fonts and Neue is uh, one of them, uh, usually 75. But um, yeah, I think it's a very... Well, there's a lot of obviously uh, controversy about what people think about Helvetica, which I think is, uh, I don't know, I'm not really <laughs> want to get involved in it. Speak a <laughs> Yeah, yeah, speak a speak a much. <laughs> the Helvetica hater. But um, I think it does what it, you know, it is what it is. And, and the reason I use it is actually probably for the reasons that people don't like it. And, and it's the, uh, the fact that what it stands for and what it kind of becomes the retro yeah. feel of it. Yeah. So I used it for a, a magazine called Anorak that I was a mm -hmm. um, creative director of. That was the main font that I used throughout it, mm -hmm. just to give it this kind of you know, 60s, 70s uh, feel. Yeah. So yeah, it's exactly what, yeah, what people don't like about the font. Actually, I mean, I, my I, opinion about Helvetica is like to a lot of typefaces, it has a very particular flavor to it and sometimes that's that part of the palette is just the right thing for the yeah, task yeah. at hand. I don't quite understand people who try to build philosophies about like why Helvetica must be used for everything because it's actually the diversity of typefaces that I like. I can think of a backlash during the 90s when there was this explosion of experimental type design. Yeah, all the fuse the, the, the emigre and the yeah, fuse the emigre, era. Yeah. Where of course Helvetica was seen as so neutral that it would be, it's what all of those were reacting to. So that was its kind of own, its own backlash. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a different quality than people who are sick of it today. <laughs> Probably It is. could be the yes. Cheddar Chiefs of uh, Fonts. Uh, <laughs> times would be the, uh, the, the, the double Gloucester. Um, <laughs> I don't know what Brie would be. That'd be some sort of... Uh, <laughs> Helvetica rounded. Oh, okay, okay. nice. <laughs> <laughs> so when I, I sent over... Uh, when they, they asked if there was anything in particular I wanted to see, I sent over a few different people. And then he came back with the one that he oh, we've got some of these interesting drawings that nobody's really seen before. And it was the one that I just thought, I don't know, I've never heard his name said. And, and <laughs> I think it's Wolpe, Berthold Wolpe, but I'm not I always Wolpe. said Wolpe, because <laughs> it sounded it's, German. It, it is German, yeah. Um, Toshio Maguri, designer I work with, found some drawings of Wolpe's tucked into another box a while back. Which is um, very exciting. Which <laughs> I thought would be really fun to see what exactly those were. So. The Volpe drawings were in with a typeface called Saxonwald, which is a very, very strange fractor design. Everyone we've shown this to says it looks really weird and wouldn't work as a fractor typeface. <laughs> so so I, um, I don't know what a fractor typeface is. So there's those Germanic black letter typefaces. Oh, okay. 
Well, it looks almost like um, when we were talking briefly about emigre and stuff like that, and um, when they would, when people were starting to geometricize yeah. kind of these these things. A fractor typeface would have had a slightly different layout than a Latin typeface because it had some glyphs that were different, like the long S, for instance. Yeah, the sharp, the sharp German S. Did this actually become commercially available, or was this? This was this. No, you can see notes just, notes on all of these that this was scrapped. scrapped. Yeah, just saying. There was some. I think there was another weight that was available for a while, but this typeface was scrapped in 1964. But even making a fractor typeface in 1964 seems pretty late. Well, I guess that's when they just stopped maintaining it as a product. If this is originally drawn in... Yeah, these were all approved in 1939. So yeah. So it has a little bit of a life. Yeah. So by 1964, no one was using it anymore. Yeah. It doesn't really uh, express the, the fun-loving 60s, does it? <laughs> <laughs>